Meanwhile, the surviving Beatles played a big role in the show as well. And NBC's Kate Snow recently caught up with Ringo Starr. Kate, good morning to you. Good morning, Matt. Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr brought down the house last night with a surprise appearance together. Yoko Ono was dancing in the aisles. They took home a Lifetime Achievement Award five decades after the Beatles' unexpected rise to fame in the U.S. <laughs> Fifty years later, in Los Angeles last week, director David Lynch's foundation gave Ringo a Lifetime of Peace and Love Award. Thank you. Thank you. Peace and love. Right. How great it would be if there was more peace and love. Words he'd like all of us to remember as we mark 50 years of the Beatles. Can you believe it's been 50 years? No. Yeah, I'm 24. <laughs> right. So. Aren't we all? Yeah. <laughs> It's hard to imagine now, but back in the fall of 1963, Americans had no idea an invasion was coming. She Loves You is soaring up the charts at that point. You're hugely, in England. hugely popular in the UK. Yeah. People over here don't even know who you Nobody are. Nobody knew as George had come on holiday because he had his sister living here. And he came back and says, oh, they, they don't know us. The first newspaper accounts stateside weren't about the music, but the riots caused by Beatles fans in Europe. They dismissed the guys who look like limp, upside-down dust mops. That's not a collection of insects, but a quartet of young men with pudding bowl haircuts. And NBC did the first TV news report, dripping with sarcasm. One reason for the Beatles' popularity may be that it's almost impossible to hear them. We were sort of the anti-Beatles network at yeah. the time in the U.S. Well, you've come around now. <laughs> yeah. Do you forgive us? I do. The thing is, the DJs and the teenagers didn't care what the parents thought. And when a 15-year-old girl in Maryland asked her local DJ to play some Beatles, a flight attendant friend smuggled a copy of I Want to Hold Your Hand out of London. The DJ played that bootleg copy and shared it with DJs around the country. We didn't have the internet, we didn't have social media, but what we did have were television and radio, and those commanded really big audiences. Producer Steve Greenberg wrote about the Beatles in his book, How the Beatles Went Viral in 64. The average teenager back in 1963 listened to the radio three hours a day. And so imagine kids listening to the radio stations and hearing over and over and over again over Christmas vacation this incredible new sound that was the Beatles. They were funny. They annoyed our parents, which was a great thing. At 13, Penelope Rollins was one of those screaming girls who lived for the Beatles. She papered her room with photos of George Harrison. I thought we were soulmates, you know. I just could tell. I could tell he was my future husband. It was obvious. <gasps> the Beatles went viral, so to speak, in just a matter of weeks. Three of the Beatles had never even been to America before, and now they were flying to New York to be on The Ed Sullivan Show. It was like the UK, it was like France, it was like Denmark. There's a lot of girls screaming at us. Had you been expecting that? Not really, no. We didn't know what to expect, really. And then the press. Do you want to get a haircut at all? No. No, no. no. I had one yesterday. <laughs> they thought you were cheeky, people kept yeah. saying. And long hair. <laughs> Mop tops. Man, it was down to here. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles. That first night on Ed Sullivan, 45% of Americans who had TVs were watching. It was funny. We were all crystallized in this moment. And it was like being part of a big movement. And it gave us a sort of authority or we mattered. The country had just come out of a horrible, dark depression uh, triggered by the death of John Kennedy. They wanted something new. This is the next thing. Let the 60s begin. In February, Ringo is releasing a children's book. It's based on his solo, Octopus's Garden, and you can hear a portion of his reading of that book as well as more of our interview on Today.com. Were you totally cool. starstruck? Yeah. I kind of was. I kept saying it's so exciting <laughs> to talk about all this with us. I don't know when he taught you to play the drums. He tried to teach me to play the <laughs> he drums. He talked about that with me. Did he? He's yeah, still it was talking embarrassing. About <laughs> what is the biggest difference, though, between the Beatles coming here and the reaction they got and someone like One Direction now when they come here and what you see in the crowds there? 
I think because mm. they they get big real fast now, but then disappear real quick because mm. we move on to the next Nice thing. kids, but will we be talking about them in 50 years? Yeah. Is their music going to change the yeah. world? Yeah. Exactly. And the newness of that phenomenon to see women just go crazy. Yeah. Young girls. Okay, like thank Kate you. Snow. <laughs>